Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we are gonna do an update on the Metro X 3D scanner. Now, recently we released a video on this GPZ project where we scanned and created the upper triple clamp. And in that video, Metro X was kind of laggy, it was a little bit slow, and there were some comments about that. So full disclosure, I messed up and I was not using the most current version of RevoScan. I opened up a beta version, and that's part of the reason why we saw some of that lag. So today in this video, we're gonna go through, scan the same object again, and we're gonna use the updated version of RevoScan. So the updated version of RevoScan taps into the GPU, it cleans up some of the noise that we saw on the screen, not all of it, but most of it, and there are just some performance boosts all around. So it does work quite a bit better than it did in that video. So in this video, we're gonna focus on just laser scanning, just the top of the triple clamp for the video, and we're gonna do the cross line as well as the parallel line so we can get a sort of a performance baseline. I'm not gonna speed anything up. I'll try to talk during the whole thing so we can get a sort of a real feel of how this works. I've already pre-captured the global marker file. So we're gonna go ahead and do a cross line scan. And we're gonna be using the global marker that I've already captured with everything that we see here. Very, pretty much the same as we did in our GPZ video just marker dots on the object. There's no scan prep spray, so it's still a shiny polished aluminum. And we're gonna be using our global marker file. We'll set the object to metallic shiny. Uh, and again, the main thing that that does is it changes the intensity of the lasers. And then we can start our cloud scan. Now I've got it set to 0.4 millimeters. When we did this before in the GPZ series, we had it set to 0.3. So I'm capturing a little bit larger or a little bit more spaced out set of points, but we're gonna, I'm gonna use manual depth exposure and everything looks pretty good there. And then I'm just gonna start playing. And so one thing that we're gonna see is the on-screen preview is now this yellow, orange, red, and then green. So that's, that's a change that's happened. And this is actually nice because it helps us, instead of just going from red to green, it means that we get a better visual indicator of these colors. Uh, but we can already see that there is a performance difference. I'm, I'm moving a lot faster and I, I'm able to get the green color on the screen quite a bit quicker. We are still gonna have some of that noise. You can see a little bit of the noise around the scan. And mainly that comes from the shiny object, but this version of RevoScan is doing a much better job of it. I'm gonna go ahead and try to work my way around the side here. I did put a couple extra marker dots from when we did the GPZ video. So I put a couple on the side and I used a few of the larger marker dots as well as the smaller ones. So that way we could see that. And go ahead and just move back and forth. One of the performance things you'll notice is if you get a little bit of lag, most likely this is due to a lack of enough marker dots. So if you find that it's pausing or having some trouble, you may be at too steep of an angle relative to the marker dots you do have, or you may just not have enough on, um, on the object. So as I rotate around the side, it starts to lose because I don't have enough marker dots visible. So I need to make sure that when we're doing this, we just have to put enough marker dots that there's always four that are within you know 10 to 15 degrees of the angle of the scanner uh, so that's a big thing that's hard to get used to especially when you're used to scanning with an ir scanner or like a blue light scanner where we don't really have to worry about these marker dots as much or if you're used to scanning larger objects the larger objects uh, on larger object mode we we get to space them quite a bit further apart with scanners like the morocco so on this, in this case with smaller parts, it can be very tough to get enough marker dots in there, but try to place them in areas where you know that they can be removed easily. And if you don't have enough, you are gonna get some of these sort of skips and lags in the process. All right, another thing that is going to be difficult, even with the performance increase, is scanning in where the forks are clamped. And that's just simply based on the width of the depth cameras that we have here. Because the depth cameras are wider than the, the actual opening we're trying to scan into, it makes it difficult to get those inside sidewalls. Now we can scan down into deep objects pretty well, but scanning into a bore like that, that's gonna be a difficult task. So we wanna make sure we get 
as clean of a scan as possible at the top and bottom edge. And then we can extrapolate that data when we're, uh, you know, we're doing our CAD or reverse engineering. So far, everything looks pretty good. I do, it does look like I want to capture some more on these backsides. So I'm going to move over there. Um, another thing that we can do mid scan is I can go to auto exposure. Uh, and sometimes this can help because it gives it a little bit more freedom to increase or decrease the depth exposure on the fly. Whereas when we set it manually, we can increase it with the plus and minus buttons, but it's a bit hard to do while you're scanning. Like for instance, holding the scanner with one hand like this means that it's really hard for me to also hit those plus and minus buttons. Uh, so while generally I don't like to use auto exposure, especially if I'm using a scan spray, uh, in this case, it does help, especially when you're, again, holding it with just with one hand. Uh, so everything looks pretty good here. Again, now because of the angle, um, as we get a steeper angle to the part, you'll notice we're starting to get some of those remnants on top. When we were scanning in more of a perpendicular orientation, we didn't really have that problem. But now we're starting to get a bit of those remnants floating above. Let me go ahead and pause this. And we'll take a look at the scan. So performance wise, we captured more data uh, a bit quicker. You can see I'm still missing some areas maybe on the right hand side there, but we definitely captured more data. We captured it quicker. Uh, and there's, there's less of this sort of like having to move slowly back and forth over the object. I'm just gonna try to round this off. I'm gonna go to the side. I may not have enough markers to make this work. Let's see if I can get it. I did put a marker on the side of it. Let's see if I can just capture a little bit more before we call this scan good. So I'll, I'll definitely say that this is a big shock. If you're going from, you know, say just using an IR scanner to going to a laser scanner like this, uh, it can be a bit of a shock because the process is slightly different. But I will say that it is not really fair to compare a $900 laser scanner to a $15 to $20,000 laser scanner, you are definitely going to see a performance increase if you're using, uh, you know, a more expensive sort of professional oriented 3D scanner. We're not going to get the same sort of performance out of one that's a sub thousand dollar, but it is very much dependent on your system. So I'm using a 13th generation i7 the i9s are going to be a bit faster. So if you are looking at a system, that's something to, to keep in mind that there is going to be a direct correlation between your GPU, between the processor speed that you have and the specific processor. Uh, now, I'm not going to process this yet. I'm still going to do that at my desktop. But I want to go ahead and do another scan on parallel line, keeping in mind that we're only pulling points back in where the lasers are. So when we had 14 cross lasers, we're going to be pulling more data in than when we have seven parallel lines. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new scan, this time in parallel line mode. Uh, once again, I need to rotate this based on how I'm holding it. I'll go once again to auto depth exposure. Uh, this time I've got it set to a general object, which is going to have the laser brightness set a little bit lower. But with parallel line mode, one thing that we want to be careful with is when we go back and forth, we also need to rotate the scanner a little bit. So we're gonna basically manually create those cross laser lines. So you wanna go back and forth over the scan, keeping or over the object, keeping in mind, again, we're pulling in half as much data as we were with the cross line mode. Now, the main reason that you would want to use a parallel line mode would be to get down into areas or over corners where you had difficulty using the cross line. Uh, so again, it is something to keep in mind that again, you're pulling in less data, you're, you're pulling in about half as much data. So just keep that in mind if you are trying to use parallel line mode over the cross line mode. Now, personally, I haven't found a really good use case for parallel line mode and just all the things that I've scanned. I tend to go with the cross line mode if I'm using laser scanning. And I would say it's probably about 75% of the time I use full field mode and probably only 25% of the time use one of the laser scan modes. Uh, 
just really, I don't need the accuracy and precision, like the little bit of a bump that we get from the laser scan, but a lot of people do. It just depends on the size of the object you're scanning. For something like this, the triple clamp, I'm going to rely on measurements over the data that I'm pulling off the scan. So really the benefit of the laser scan is it's not adding anything. So if it takes longer to scan for me, then there's not a huge benefit. But if I'm trying to get a lot of fine detail, casting marks or internal features on a mechanical part, then the extra time it takes to scan is potentially a benefit to me. Now, even though I'm using laser scan mode with the parallel lines or the cross lines, or even if I use full field mode, we can still merge all of those scans together. We don't have to use the same mode for the top and the bottom, or we could potentially get one scan of just one side of the clamp, and then we could uh, reuse another side or the full. So for example, if we were missing just some of the internal bore area, we could try to use this parallel line mode and get as much in that area as possible and then merge that with the other scan. So these are all possibilities and it just depends on your, uh, your specific part. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. And again, you can see that there are quite a few fewer remnants floating above the part. Uh, they, they definitely have been able to filter that out. It's definitely going quite a bit faster than it was in the previous version of Revoscan I was using. So now I'm going to complete that one. Don't really, don't really need that one. I'm going to go ahead off camera and scan the bottom of it. So that way we've got a top and a bottom that we can then process at the desktop. All right, so in our Revoscan software back at my desktop, I'm not going to walk through the entire process. We've done this dozens of times on different scans, but I do just simply want to point out that uh, with the updated version of Revoscan for the Metro X, that we do have that speed boost. We do still have a bunch of noise that happens on the top. It's not nearly as much as we saw in the previous version of Revoscan. And again, it is based on the shininess of the object and the angle of the scanner. So as we end up going around the backside of our scan, this is when we're starting to see these reflections based on these angles. It's hitting these corners and, and things kind of go a little crazy. I don't really see this when we're dealing with scan spray. It seems to scan quite a bit cleaner, but you do see it with the shiny objects. Uh, so basically we've got the raw data and going through isolation cleans out most of that stuff. You can see that we've got all the holes from the marker dots on here. Did the same thing for the bottom. So again, the raw data had a little bit of noise. And then you can see that the, the side of this, this triple clamp was uh, hand sanded and polished by me. Originally it had casting marks on the side. So the, the shape of it and some of the marks that we see are not remnants of the scanner itself. They're going to be part of the process of, of me actually going through and hand sanding and, and polishing this years ago. So merging these two together with a little bit of cleanup, we can still see that we've got some spots where the marker dots are. Now you can go through and you can clean up some of this stuff inside of Revoscan. We've talked about that before, about going and deleting an area and filling it back in and smoothing it if you want. Because I know that I needed to align this to a coordinate system anyways, I hopped over to Quick Surface. Now, if you are looking to purchase Quick Surface, you can buy it through RevoPoint when you buy a scanner. Uh, I'm also an affiliate channel, so if you want to use the code LEAD10 at checkout, you can save 10% off of it through um, purchasing it directly through Quick Surface. But what we have here is the merge scan that's been cleaned up a little bit more. Again, hand sanding marks from the casting, the, the hand sanding and polishing I did. But you can see that I removed the marker dots on top. I did a little bit of a remesh to reduce the count and filled in some holes on the bottom, areas where we had marker dots over screw holes. This one did not have a marker dot, so it came out a bit better. But then we take this aligned scan and we bring it into Fusion. So in Fusion, we can see if we turn off our edges that the scan looks pretty good. It is complete. There are a few small holes. I didn't fill in like where the threads are and so on, but this is aligned to our coordinate system. It's directly at the top. It's in the center of the bore for the stem, and the X is pointing, uh, in this case, forward as it would be on the motorcycle. So that's, that, that's the general process, but the main highlight here is I wanted to point out that the update to RevoScan 
did really improve the process. It sped up the scan. They have changed a few things in the software. It does also give you a performance, uh, basically a little performance thing that a check that happens when you launch it, and it'll tell you if you should, uh, you know, experience any lag in your system. The system I'm on now is the 10th gen i7, and I did get a warning that said you will likely experience some lag if you're using this to scan. The performance on the 13th gen i7, it popped up and said that the system was fine. But again, if you go to like an i9 and you increase the RAM and processor speed and GPU, you will see performance benefits there. Uh, if you want to see the scan, I'll put a link to the Fusion file in the description of the video. You can download it as a mesh file directly or open it in Fusion if you want. And let's go ahead and hop back into the garage to conclude this. Okay, so hopefully this update helps understand where the Metro X is at currently. Uh, again, these are on sale for like eight or nine hundred dollars right now. We are an affiliate channel, so if you do want to support the channel, I'll leave that information in the description. But hopefully seeing the update version of RevoScan specifically for the Metro X helps understand where the performance is at for both the cross line and the parallel line mode. I haven't really noticed a big difference in full field mode with the change because it really doesn't need the GPU like the laser scanning modes do. But if you have any questions on this, please let me know. We will be doing more videos with both the Morocco as well as the Metro X for our GPZ project, as well as other things that we have going on on the channel. But if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer those. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.